All right, I wanted to take you through a few different steps for DJing live in Ableton. I've done a uh, tutorial on how to put a DJ mix together in the arrangement window, but I wanted to get into more of live use in the session window. So in this particular tutorial, uh, I'm going to get into how you set up your cue settings and um, basically how you use a crossfader. Um, first thing um, I should let you know is that um, as far as warping your songs, that's something that you want to do in advance. And I have two tutorials on uh, warping your songs. So go ahead and look at those if you have any questions on that. Uh, first and foremost, um, I'm going to teach you the basic approach with two tracks. Uh, with, with DJing live in uh, Ableton, you can probably use as many tracks as you like. But you're pretty much going to have two tracks as your main setup. You know, just like having two turntables or whatever. Um, so we're setting this up in Audio 1 and Audio 2. And I've dragged um, two separate tracks in uh, one in each window. And basically, uh, the first thing that you want to figure out how to do is uh, how to cue your tracks. So I can, uh, for example, listen to this track here while this one's playing. Um, in order to uh, cue a track, you are going to need a multiple output sound card, uh, something with more than just stereo out. Um, otherwise, it's just not going to uh, it's not going to work. So in this case, um, I don't have um, any more than stereo outputs, and even if I did, you wouldn't be able to hear the cue in this tutorial. So what I'm doing is um, I'm going to set the main output to the left speaker and then I'm going to set the cue output to the right speaker. So basically you can kind of see what they're both doing. Um, like I said before, this is just for the tutorial. Um, you're going to want to have uh, more than two outputs. So let's go ahead and start. Um, the first thing that you're going to want to do is over in this area here, you're going to see you've got a cue out uh, section here. And this is where you would find all your multiple outs. So let's say you had uh, six or eight outputs. You could come over here and choose output three and four for your cue. And then your main output would be one and two. In this case, I'm going to choose output two, which is going to be your right speaker. And then the master out, I'm just going to put to the left speaker, which is going to be output one. And then on both of my tracks, I'm going to go ahead and uh, assign this to one and assign this to one as well, just like so. Now, normally when you set it up properly, these outputs would be uh, one and two, and your cue would be set up to three and four or whatever. Um, what you'll notice now is since I've set this cue to its own output, uh, this has changed here to cue and this right here now becomes your headphone volume. So if I want to, let's say, cue this track right here, I'll show you. I'll bring this down here and now we're cueing. But you're also hearing it in the main speaker because the volume is up. So if the volume is down, you're only going to hear it in your right speaker. And same thing over here. Just like so. So let's say this this song here So what you hear in the left speaker would actually be what the audience would hear. And what you hear in the right speaker is what you're hearing until you decide to go ahead and mix this one in. And then it will come into... Now they're both playing in the left speaker. So I'll turn off the cue. And you've got both songs playing. So let me stop this for a second. that's essentially uh, how it works with the volume. Now, you could also work with um, with a crossfader. And in that case, you would just go ahead and leave both of your volumes up, and you would assign, 
here's your crossfader over here. Follow my arrow. Down here is the actual crossfader. Goes all the way to the left and right. Now, the right side is going to represent A. So, I, excuse me, the left side is going to represent A. So, you want to put your, your first audio track on A and your second audio track on B. That way, if I go ahead and play both of them, right now I'm hearing audio one because I got my crossfader set over here. And then as I blend, you'll hear the other track starting to come in and now it's starting to take over. Just like so. So let me go ahead and stop that. And what you're going to want to do, you're not going to want to use the crossfader with your mouse. You would go ahead and assign that uh, to one of the knobs on your uh, controller would be the best approach to use. And you would just simply hit MIDI and grab that controller and then twist the knob that you want to control it. Turn it off. And now when I twist that knob, I got sm smooth transition. I'll get a little bit more into MIDI uh, setup on um, another tutorial. I think this is going to be a four-part tutorial. But essentially this is uh, the basic way that uh, you set up for queuing and, um, and set up your crossfader. Um, you don't just have to assign one track to A and one track to B. You could have as many tracks as you want, essentially, but um, I'm trying to uh, set you up for the easiest DJ approach um, and one that's most common to use. What some people might do with these other tracks is um, they'll actually load all the songs that they want in their playlist and then they'll unclick this in and out here and then you you have all the selection so if you're playing for an hour or two hours you might have 20 tracks to choose from in here you could queue those up over here and see what song you want to play and then just drag it into your audio one or your audio two uh, as necessary um, and that's going to be it for part one of this tutorial uh, come back for part, part two